Hello there, I am Ahmed. I will be sharing with you our technical design and flight readiness review for SUS 2023 competition. Our highly skilled and diverse drone and robotics as is group, DRAD, team from King Abdulaziz University at Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is ready to compete. With months of preparation and a collaborative approach, the team is driven to achieve our goals and emerge victorious. This video will present our technical design and flight readiness for student unmanned aerial system SUAS competition. Our presentation covers the technical design of our unmanned aerial system for the SUAS competition. It will introduce our team, discuss our approach to design, and present the hardware and software components of our system. It will also highlight the testing process that ensures flight readiness. Our system offers innovation and real-world application, and the team look forward to demonstrating its capabilities. The introduction section will visually and verbally showcase the university and team, introduce the development and competition teams, and give a brief UAS overview. The development team consists of 18 skilled members and an experienced advisor who are committed to developing the best unmanned aerial system for the Suez competition. We work collaboratively and value innovation, excellence, and interdisciplinary expertise. Our goal is to create a high-performing system with real-world applications. All members are undergraduate students at the King Abdulaziz University except one graduated from the same university. Meet our top-notch team of eight skilled and dedicated members, handpicked from our development team, ready to dominate the Suez competition. Our team brings unique students in autonomous flight control, computer vision, and navigation. We pride ourselves on our exceptional collaboration and teamwork, enabling us to tackle any challenge with confidence. Get ready to witness our innovation, perseverance, and teamwork in action. Our team from King Abdulaziz University, a prestigious public university in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, is proud to be part of an institution that offers a wide range of undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate programs in various fields. KU has gained worldwide recognition for its excellence in engineering and technology education, ranking 38th in the QS World University rankings by subject in engineering and technology. With an overall global QS ranking of 106, KU is committed to providing quality education while also serving the needs of the local community through various initiatives. The Drone and Robotics as is Group Drag is a student group established by the College of Engineering at King Abdulaziz University in line with the university's vision to support innovation and technological advancement. The group focuses on organizing activities related to drones and robotics and is led by the initiative's leader, Dr. Saad Wasley. The group's primary goal is to acquire engineering skills and knowledge related to the initiative, as well as to offer educational courses, hold technical competitions, and participate in global competitions. Through its efforts, the DRAG team aims to contribute to the development of the engineering community, both locally and globally. The team is competing in the Suez competition to apply their theoretical knowledge to a real-life project and hone their skills in a project-based setting, with a focus on teamwork and communication to leverage innovation and technology for a positive impact. The team has a heavy-lift hexacopter drone that boasts a 2,350mm wingspan, with a maximum endurance of 60 minutes and a maximum payload of 10kg. This powerful aircraft is designed for demanding aerial operations that require the transportation of equipment and supplies. To make our operations even more efficient, the team has a specialized drop mechanism that connects to a winch, capable of carrying a maximum weight of 5 kilograms with a 30 meters rope length and a speed of 15 meters per minute. The drop mechanism can load a maximum of 6 objects at a time, making it a perfect tool for precision deliveries. For the ultimate aerial surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities, our hexacopter drone comes equipped with a gimbal camera system. Now we will move to technical design. In this slide and the next slide, the team has included a table that outlines the requirements and acceptance criteria for our system. The acceptance criteria are important to set standards for the system and have something to compare our progress to. The requirements are set to make our system eligible for the competition, and the acceptance criteria are something the team set for ourselves to achieve. Let's move forward to the next slide. Here we'll be diving into the design overview. For hardware, 
The team has a heavy lift hexacopter drone with a 2,350mm wingspan, a maximum endurance of 60 minutes, and a maximum payload of 10kg. It also has a specialized drop mechanism capable of carrying a maximum weight of 5kg, with a 30 meters rope length and a speed of 22 meters per minute. Additionally, the hexacopter drone is equipped with a gimbal camera system with pitch and yaw control, zoom, capture and record control features, and pitch and yaw control. This cutting-edge camera system makes the hexacopter drone a powerful tool. For software, the mission flowchart shows that there are four states. Every state gives privileges to specific functions. The states are obstacle avoidance states, object detection and obstacle avoidance state, obstacle avoidance and localization state, and obstacle avoidance and airdrop state. The intuition behind this system is increase the efficiency and speed by telling the drone when or where to do some functions. However, as the flow chart shows the mission will end and the drone will return to home when all bottles are air dropped correctly. We're done with this slide, so let's move on to the next one. On this slide, we'll be discussing imaging and object detection, localization, and classification. The camera is a Sony A6300. It's a high-resolution camera with a high processor and frames transfer bandwidth. The camera is connected to the Jetson Nano, and the Jetson Nano is connected to the flight controller. Jetson Nano is chosen because it's an optimized computer for computer vision and deep learning tasks, which is the most suitable option for ODLC. The frame is captured by the Jetson Nano, and after the ODLC, the Jetson Nano will send the command to the flight controller to detect the emergent objects. A diverse dataset of a custom mannequin was gathered from various angles of views. This dataset was then utilized to train the YOLO version 8 model, enabling it to accurately identify and classify objects in real-world scenarios to detect the standard objects. There are 13 unique shapes. Each shape can be colored in one of 10 distinct colors. Also an alphanumeric character will be located at the center of every shape. The total number of possible combinations is 4680. The pipeline for object detection and classification is Firstly, detect the object if it is a shape or mannequin. Secondly, classify the alphanumeric character. Finally, detect the color. The localization method used is, compute centimeters per pixel ratio. Then compute the latitude and longitude. We use the known equations to compute the latitude and longitude. Now, let's transition to the next slide. This slide will focus on airdrop. Regarding the drop mechanism alternatives that the team evaluated for the mission, three alternatives will be compared, a pushrod release mechanism, a dual gate drop mechanism, and a centrifuge release mechanism. Our team carefully evaluated the pros and cons of each alternative to determine the best solution for our mission. The pushrod release mechanism is a simple design consisting of six pushrods, six rocker arms, six servos, and a carbon fiber frame. It has multiple pros such as being lightweight, able to hold six objects at a time, able to withstand a load of 30 kilograms, and having a simple operating system. However, it has an intermediate level of maintenance which is considered a con. The second alternative is a dual gate drop mechanism consisting of two servos and a carbon fiber box. It is easy to maintain, simple to operate, and able to withstand a load of 10 kilograms. However, it comes with multiple cons, such as its weight, lack of added mechanism to close the gates back automatically, and limited capacity. Additionally, it cannot hold more than two objects at a time and must be at least five wide. The third alternative is a centrifuge release mechanism consisting of a single servo, carbon fiber shaft, fan, and external frame. It is lightweight, able to withstand a load of 12 kilograms, and causes less drive than the second alternative. However, it cannot hold more than two objects at a time and has inconsistent operating performance. From the following table, the pushrod release mechanism stands to be the best suited alternative for our mission. Basically, the mechanism system starts by tying each object to each of the drop mechanism's rods with a string. Then, the winch will begin lowering the drop mechanism until it gets close to the ground, triggering the sensors to release the object. This short video demonstrates how the drop mechanism releases and secures an object. Moving along, let's take a look at the next slide. Here we'll be exploring communications. As illustrated in the following graph, the team employed two wireless communication links between the UAV and GCS for the purposes of manual override and autonomous flight capabilities. For manual control, the FlySky FSA6X transmitter and FSI6B receiver supply the safety pilot with manual override control over the UAV in the event of system failure. 
The AFAS-2 protocol implements frequency hopping spread spectrum FHSS technology for communication stability and interference reduction. For autopilot, the UAV and GCS utilize a pair of 900x US telemetry modules to provide reliable radio communication over long distances, where both telemetry modules operate as transceivers. This configuration supports security and encryption protocols, including FHSS, which ensures the integrity of the transmitted data. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. This slide will provide more detail on aircraft. The dimensions of the airframe are 2,350 mm, payload clearance 320 mm and ground clearance 500 mm. It is made of Tory 3K carbon fiber, which is lightweight and high strength. The airframe is a heavy lift hexacopter multirotor configuration, chosen for its exceptional capacity to support heavy payloads. The airframe is capable of lifting a maximum payload of 10 kg and achieving a flight speed of 72 km per hour with a 5 kg payload for a duration of 45 minutes. The propulsion system is composed of 6 T-motor UI light motors and 28-inch carbon fiber propellers, and the power system comprises two lithium polymer batteries with a capacity of 25,000 million per hour. The shown figures demonstrate the airframe and the essential parts mounted in the UAS, such as the GPS and batteries as shown. Let's move forward to the next slide. Here we'll be diving into Autopilot. Q Ground Control is a free and open source ground control station that provides advanced mission planning capabilities for unmanned aerial systems. Its intuitive interface makes it easy to control and monitor UAS in real time, while its compatibility with a wide range of drones and sensors allows for customization. It also supports various communication protocols and hardware devices and is constantly updated by a dedicated team of developers. The autonomous flight capabilities are mainly managed by our Pixel 2.1 flight controller due to the board's reliability, processing power, and the triple array of inertial measurement units IMU. This open hardware flight management unit FME utilizes RGPLOT, which is an open source autopilot software that is infamous for its autonomous capabilities and large community support. We're done with this slide, so let's move on to the next one. On this slide, we'll be discussing obstacle avoidance. For the obstacle avoidance alternatives that the team evaluated for the UAS, specifically two alternatives will be compared, Terra Ranger and a stereoscopic camera. Our team carefully evaluated the strengths and weaknesses of each option to determine the best solution for our UAS needs. The Terra Ranger is easier, all it needs to do is install it on the drone. Everything else is software related. The installation has been hard since, we need to make clearance for the sensors. The stereoscopic camera on the other hand, is very easy to install but it is complex to set up software wise. It would need to divide the task into two parts, detection and the actual avoidance. The team initially explored using a stereoscopic camera with AI technology for their obstacle avoidance system, but ultimately chose Terra Ranger due to its more comprehensive solution for obstacle detection and avoidance. The stereoscopic camera had advantages such as a small size, low cost, and available gimbal, but it would only detect obstacles directly in front of it, making it ineffective for obstacles coming from other directions. Terra Ranger provides a more comprehensive solution for obstacle detection and avoidance, which is why it was ultimately selected for the system. After further research, we found a device that is compatible with the hardware we are using, which is the Terra Ranger. The device uses 8 LiDAR sensors, each sensor can detect up to 60 meters with a refresh rate of 120 Hz and uses a UR communication between the module and the Pixel. The device mounted on top of the drone provides an accurate reading of both long and short distances, while also being eye safe. It will affect the drone's center of gravity, meaning it won't be able to do extreme maneuvers at high speeds. The goal is accuracy, not speed. To set up the module we only need to connect its cable to the Pixel's GPS pin after that it is all software. We need to change some parameters on the system like serial communication and other preferences like the max distance and margins. Now let's transition to the next slide. Our top priority is safety, so we always follow safety protocols and procedures during both the development and the mission. This way, we can make sure everyone stays safe and the mission is successful. Let's move forward to the flight readiness. First, imaging and ODLC performance. As shown in this slide, the team divided the ODLC system into subsystem and measured the performance for each subsystem individually. Now let's transition to the next slide. This slide will focus on airdrop performance. The airdrop mechanism subsystem is a standalone system that can be tested separately and exclusively to improve the system and code for the sensor's operating ranges. 
The challenge of the system being a standalone system is to ensure that it works in conjunction with the rest of the aircraft systems by adding more sensors and rules and adjusting the code. The pylons are locked when the assembly is attached to the aircraft body, and the drop executes automatically only when the assembly is within the proximity of the ground for safety measures. The drop of available payloads is done in a program sequence to ensure delivery. Let's move forward to the next slide. Here, we'll be diving into communications performance. The team tested the safety pilot capabilities of overriding the Rouge UAV, using the FlySky FS6X transmitter and the 900X US telemetry modules. Both the UAV and GCS were able to communicate telemetry and navlink messages while maintaining a steady connection. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. This slide will provide aircraft performance. The flight test program was conducted to ensure the aircraft met the flight performance requirements. It consisted of 104 flights, with a total of 68 flight hours. The tests included fully loaded flights, maximum cruising speed, fly over different ranges, fly above 75 feet PGL and more than 200 feet away from the ground station. The results of the tests were analyzed to determine whether the aircraft met the performance requirements. In particular, the aircraft demonstrated exceptional performance when flying over waypoints within a range of 12 miles, maintaining an average endurance of 45 minutes. We're done with this slide, so let's move on to the next one. On this slide, we'll be discussing autopilot performance. The team conducted 10 autonomous flights with an average time spent in manual mode per flight of 5 minutes. During each flight, the drone was required to fly through 7 waypoints and recorded the number of attempted and hit waypoints, as well as the average waypoint miss error. The data was analyzed using statistical methods to evaluate the performance of the autopilot system, as shown in the table. Obstacle avoidance performance. The team tested the module nine times with different presets just to make sure that the drone is going to be safe in different scenarios. We have set the speed and the max distance and documented the closest distance the obstacle reached the drone and the recovery speed. In the next slide, discussing the mission test. Let me quickly go through some key performance metrics for our drone system. We've evaluated our system across several categories, including imaging and outlook, airdrop, communications, aircrafts, autopilot, obstacle avoidance, time, and overall performance. Currently, the score of the testing is decreasing because of battery charger failure, the team actively working on this manner, also improving our airdrop and outlook systems. Our autopilot performance is on track with our development goals. Overall, we're pleased with the progress we've made so far and we're continuing to work towards improving our system's performance. The team has three essential tasks to be qualified for the competition. Now that we've demonstrated our successful manual flight capabilities, let's move on to our autonomous flight demonstration, where we'll take the drone to 200 feet from the safety pilot and then transition to manual mode. After completing the autonomous flight with a successful transition to manual mode, let's proceed to the final task, which is a more complex autonomous flight demonstrating the system's ability to meet all flight performance requirements. The team almost did the autonomous flight showing the system can meet all flight performance requirements, with takeoff and landing that is either autonomous or manual. For summarizing this presentation, to qualify or the SUAS competition, our team was required to complete a series of tasks, including manual flight for takeoff, reaching 1,000 feet from the safety pilot and landing, as well as autonomous flight, reaching 200 feet from the safety pilot, a transition to manual mode, and manual landing. Additionally, we had to showcase autonomous flight meeting all flight performance requirements, with takeoff and landing that is either autonomous or manual. Our team worked hard to complete these tasks, 
and we are excited to present the videos showcasing our successful completion of the tasks. This slide displays the timeline for our SUAS computation project, which has been thoughtfully planned and executed by the team to ensure the successful completion of the project within the designated timeframe. While some challenges have been faced along the way, most of the project milestones and objectives have been met, and the team is excited to progress to the execution phase. We are immensely grateful to those who helped us for their unwavering support and encouragement throughout our journey. Thank you.